Madame Bach to my YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell. Thank you. Hello there, Matlates. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Okay, so bago tayo mag-start, again, uh, flex ko lang yung aking mga official social media accounts. You can follow me at Instagram, at Aerial04, and on TikTok at Mats and Logics. Okay, if you have questions, queries, feel free to follow me on Instagram and send me a direct message, message so that I will be able to answer your question. Okay. So, nasa lesson 2 na tayo ng ating um, lesson sa grade 7 in set for the first quarter in their mathematics. Okay, so the lesson 2 in set is all about classification and ways of naming a set. So ngayong araw, pag-uusapan natin, paano ba natin kinaklasify ang mga set at ano-ano yung mga way ng pagsusulat natin ng set. Okay. So before we're going to start, let us first identify the objectives of our lesson. So for this video, you will be able to illustrate finite and infinite set, differentiate equal and equivalent set, and be able to enumerate ways of naming a set. So bago tayo mag-start ulit, let us first have unlocking words difficulty. So ito yung mga words na may encounter ninyo during your lesson in set. So unang-una, meron tayong tinatawag na integers. So integers are the set of numbers from uh, negative infinity to zero up to positive infinity. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng negative numbers, integers, negative whole numbers, and then zero, and then lahat ng positive whole numbers. Okay. Whole numbers are the numbers that are positive starting from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc and so on. Counting numbers or natural numbers are the numbers na ginagamit natin when we are counting. So, ito yung mga numbers na 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hindi included yung 0 kasi when we are counting, we are not starting with 0. So, kung nagka-count tayo, ginagamit natin ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Even numbers are the numbers that are divisible by 2. So, ano yung mga numbers na yon? Pag sinabi natin divisible by 2, eto yung mga numbers na kapag dinivide natin sa 2, wala tayong remainder. So, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. Kasi pag dinivide natin sa 2 yung mga yan, wala tayong magiging remainder. Add numbers is the opposite of even numbers. Okay? Kung ano yung mga hindi nakalista kay even numbers, yun yung na kay add numbers. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Eto yung mga numbers na kapag dinivide natin sa 2, magkakaroon tayo ng gutal. Let's say, for example, 3 divided by 2, we have... Um, uh, we have 1, remainder 1. 5 divided by 2, we have 2, remainder 1. So, lagi tayong magkakaroon ng remainder. So, hindi siya even. Kung mapapansin yung word na even, kapag sabi natin even, equal yung pagbibigay no, para sa dalawang tao. Kaya siya even. Uh, next, prime numbers. Prime numbers are the numbers that do not have factor aside from 1 and itself. Ito yung mga numbers na hindi natin pwedeng i-divide sa kahit ano pang numbers aside dun sa sarili nila at sa 1. Okay, yun lang ang factors niya, 1 and itself. Composite numbers is the opposite of prime numbers. Dito naman sa composite numbers, these are the numbers na meron silang factors aside from 1 and itself. Ano yun? Pwede natin silang i-divide sa iba pang number na hindi tayo magkakaroon ng remainder. Let's say, for example, si 4, pwede siyang 1 times 4, pwede siyang 2 times 2. Si 6, pwede siyang 1 times 6, pwede siyang 3 times 2. Alexi like prime numbers, they are all numbers na 1 times 2 lang, 3 times 1 lang, 1 times 5, 1 times 7, 1 times 11. Perfect squares are the numbers na pag kinuha natin yung square root nila uh, at minultiply natin sa sarili, makukuha natin yung numbers na yun. Let's say, for example, 1 times 1, 1. 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, 16. 5 times 5, 25. Perfect square yung tawag natin sa kanila. Multiples are numbers na that we do and we get when we skip counting, either by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Say, for example, multiples of 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12. Mga multiples na din. Factors, numbers which can be divided without remainder. Nababanggit ko na sa inyo kanina yon. at yung mga numbers na kapag dinivide natin dun sa isang number na kinukuha natin ng factor, wala tayong makukuhang remainder. Let's say, for example, ano yung factor ng 4? Okay. 
Isip kayo ngayon ng number na kapag dinivide natin kay 4, walang remainder, so pwede tayong 1. Pwede rin siyang 4 divided by 2, we have 2. Uh, 4 divided by 4, we have 1. So, yun yung mga, na mga factors ni 4. We have 1, 2, and 4. Okay. Next. Uh, eto, uh, finite and infinite sets. So, andito na tayo ngayon sa classification of sets. Okay, ka-classify natin. So, meron tayong dalawang classification ng set. Ano yon? We have finite and infinite sets. Pag sinabi natin finite, may katapusan. Kapag natin sinabi natin infinite, walang katapusan. Okay, let's understand it further. A set is finite if the number of elements in a given set is a whole number, 1, 2, 3, blank, n. Otherwise, it is said to be infinite. Okay. Ito ha, again, a set is finite if the number of elements of a given set is a whole number, 1, 2, 3, etc. And otherwise, it is said to be infinite. When we talk about finite set, sabi ko sa inyo, may katapusan, it can be counted dahil na meron siya katapusan. Yung infinite set cannot be counted kasi it never ends after all. Hindi natin siya kayang bilangin. So, paano mas maintindihan nyo pa? Let's have another example. Ayan. Set A has an, L, uh, has an element of counting numbers. At yung counting numbers natin na ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on. Okay. Kung makapansin nyo, wala siyang katapusan. No? Wala siyang dulo. Okay. In that case, this is what we called an infinite set. And in infinite set, since we cannot write it, kasi nga, sabi natin, too many to mention or too many to write, dahil nga wala siyang katapusan, it never ends, we are using ellipses. So yung ellipses na yun ginagamit natin to denote na meron tayong meron pang kasunod yung numbers hanggang sa walang katapusan or napakadami niya kasi. Again, hindi lang natin ginagamit yung ellipses when we are writing infinite set. We are writing ellipses because there are numbers eh, there are numbers or elements in a set that that are too many to mention. Masyado silang madami kapag inilagay natin lahat. Para naman maintindihan nyo, ano ba naman yung finite set? So, so B is a set of all counting numbers less than 5. So, ano, ano ba yung mga counting numbers? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ganina, counting numbers lang siya. But this time, counting numbers less than 5. So, meron na tayong condition which is less than 5. So, in that case, we only have 1, 2, 3, and 4. We don't need to write ellipses kasi konti lang naman yung numbers na inililis sa natin. And, nailalagay natin sila lahat. So, naililis natin sila lahat. So, set B is a finite set. Okay? Kasi meron siyang katapusan. Alam natin na meron siyang katapusan dahil 1, 2, 3, and 4. Dahil less than 5. Again, kanina wala tayong condition na less than 5. So, in that case, it became infinite set. Ngayon, meron tayong condition na less than 5, making it a finite set. Don't forget the word less than. Okay, less than yung ginamit dito. Kasi meron tayong mga terms that uh, na pwede na, na doon natin masasabi kung a finite ba siya or infinite. Okay, how about this one? Uh, C is a set of all letters in the English alphabet. So, alam naman natin na 28 ang letters ng English alphabet. So, that means pwede natin ilista lahat. Okay? Or, meron siyang katapusan kasi 28 lang siya. So, C has an element of A, B, C, D, and E, and so on, up to X, Y, and Z. Sabi ko sa inyo, we are not only using ellipses with... Um, a finite set. Set C is a finite set. Why? Ginagamit natin yung ellipses if the if the elements are too many to mention. Too many pero in, pero may dulo pa din. Let's say for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, etc. hanggang X, Y, and Z. Gumamit lang tayo ng ellipses to denote na meron pang elements in between A, B, C, D, E sa pagitan ng E hanggang X meron pa tayong mga elements sa hindi inilagay. Okay. How about this one? D is a set of whole numbers greater than 9. Greater than 9. So, that could be D has an element of 10, 11, 12, 13. So, mapansin nyo, maraming numbers na greater than 9. And, wala siyang 
natapusan. Gumamit din tayo ng ellipsis, but this time, this is an infinite set. Because in the first place, napakadaming uh, numbers that are greater than 9. Though meron siyang condition na greater than 9. Equal and equivalent set. So, ano naman yung equal and equivalent set? Tapos na tayo sa infinite and finite set. Two sets are equal if and only if, again, if and only if, they contain exactly the same elements. Pag nakita ninyo na yung dalawang set, dito pinagko-compare na natin yung dalawang set. Pag nakita ninyo na yung dalawang set ay merong exactly the same element, that means we call those sets an equal set. How about this? When two sets are are equivalent, two sets are equivalent if and only if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets. Or, uh, sa madaling sabi, masabi natin na equivalent ang dalawang set if and only if they have the same number of sets or the same sila ng cardinality. Magkamukha sila ng dami ng element dun sa given na sets. So, para mas maintindihan nyo, let's have this figure. Ayan. In this case, set, nakita natin ang set A has an element of orange, apple, and guava. Set B has an element of guava, mango, and apple. Set C has, a, uh, has an element of apple, guava, guava, and orange. Okay. Set A and C are equal set. Why? Identify natin. A and C. A has an orange, yung B may orange din. Yung A may apple, yung B may apple din. Yung... A may guava, yung B may guava din. So, that means set A and C are equal sets. Set A and B, identify natin. Si A may, may orange, si B walang orange. Si A may apple, si B may apple. Si, B, si A may guava, si B may guava. Okay, hindi sila equal set. But as you notice, they both have what? One, two, three. Three elements. Hey, A has three elements, B has three elements. In that case, they are equivalent. The same with C. B and C. B has guava, C has guava. B has mango, C don't have mango. B has apple, C has apple. So, yung C naman natin, merong orange. Yung B natin, walang orange. So, in that case, ang tawag natin sa kanila ay equivalent sets. Kasi, hindi sila exactly the same, but they have the same correspondence or they have the same number of elements. Well, let's have another example. So, dito naman, ayan, nakalagay na siya. So, uh, set C and D are equivalent set. Why? Identify natin si C and D. C and D, C has 3, we have 3, 2, we don't have 2. But, pag binilang natin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, hindi man exactly magkamukha yung element nila, they both have the same number of elements or they have the they have the same cardinality. So, they are equivalent sets. Set A and C. A and C. Okay, 1. We have 2. We have 3. We have 4. And we have 5. They both have this exactly the same element. So, they are, e they are equal set. Set B and C are neither. Why? Because B only have 4 elements. C has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Elements, okay? And then, they do not have exactly the same element. So, in that case, set B and C are neither equal nor equivalent. Okay, Set A and D are equivalent sets. So, why? A and D are equivalent set because they both have five elements, yung set A and D natin, but they do not have exactly the same elements, making it an equivalent set. Okay. Okay, if two are if two sets are equivalent, are they equal? O kapag daw ba yung dalawang set ay equivalent, are they equal? Definitely not. Why? Kasi uh, pag sinabi lang nating equivalent, again, magkamukha lang sila ng dami ng element, but it doesn't mean na magkamukha na sila agad ng element. Okay. What if if two sets are equal, are they equivalent? Again, ang dalawa pag ang dalawang set daw ay equal, Ibig sabihin ba nun, equivalent sila? Definitely yes. Okay. Because, uh, since they both, they exactly have the same uh, elements in each set, making it, uh, 
the same cardinality. Ibig sabihin, magkamukha sila ng bilang ng element. O, so, kapag tandaan, kapag ang dalawang set ay equivalent, hindi automatic equal. Again. Pero kapag ang set ay equal, automatic, they are equivalent. Let's proceed with the next topic. Ways of defining a set. How do we define or how do we name a set? Okay. Again, how do we define or how do we name a set? So we have two ways in a set. We have the roster method and the set builder notation. How does the two differ from each other? So when we talk about roster method, uh, this is, uh, itong ginagawa natin doon, listing the elements. Yung ginagawa natin kanina, we are listing the elements. If the set does not contain a very large number of elements, so ginagamit natin yung roster method kapag hindi naman masyadong marami yung element ng given na set. Yung set builder notation naman ginagamit natin to describe the elements. And we are using set builder notation if there are too many elements or too many to write, too many to mention. Masyadong maraming element, we are going to use set builder notation. In order for you to get it uh, easily, meron tayong example dito. So, paano yun? Well, let's say, for example, eto. Example, in roster method, we have uh, set A has an element of A, E, I, O, U. So, ito uh, uh, a set of ano to, um, vowel. Okay. Next, set B has an element of yellow, red, blue or a set of primary colors. Since tatlo lang naman yung primary colors and we only have five vowels, that means we can use roster method kasi nga konti lang yung element. How about set builder notation? Set builder notation, ganito siya. Let's say, for example, uh, C is the element of X such that X is a letter in an alphabet. Read as, eto. C is the set of all X such that X is a letter in the alphabet. Okay. Uh, ibig sabihin yan, uh, since Marami yung letters sa alphabet, pwede tayong gumamit ng set builder notation. Okay, kasi meron tayong A, B, C, D. Though pwede rin natin gamitan ng roster method, yung sasabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, maglagay ng ellipsis sa gitna. But in this case, pwede din natin siyang gamitan ng set builder notation or i-describe lang natin ano ba yung element na meron sa set. Ayan, okay. In roster method, A has an element of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. Okay. In set, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat yan ay factor ni 12. Or lahat yan, kapag dinivide natin sa 12, walang remainder. So, kapag gagawin natin siyang set builder notation, A is a set of X such that X is a factor of 12. Okay. Pwede rin naman siyang ganito. How about this one? 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13. Okay. Mapapansin nyo, they are all prime numbers but less than what? Less than 17. Okay. Kasi yung 14 is not a prime number. Yung 15 is not also a prime number. And 16 is not also a prime number. Okay. Pag sinabi natin prime number, ito yung mga numbers na walang factor aside from 1 in itself. So, pwede, kapag nilagay natin siya sa set builder notation, we will have B is a set of X such that X is a prime, prime number less than 17. Okay. How about this one? Author. C has an element of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So, mapasin nyo, Roy G. Vib, ito yung color ng rainbow. Okay. In roster method, nilista natin lahat ng color ng rainbow. In set builder notation, ilalagay lang natin, C is a set of X, such that X is a color of the rainbow. Okay. So, hanggang dun muna yung discussion natin ng ngayong araw. So, Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video and comment and comment something on our comment section. And do not forget to subscribe on my channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you will be updated on our latest upload. Thank you.